think the second big half of what a template is, apart from the navigator that we see with the project map, view map, lap, book and publisher, is all of the attributes. So we find those attributes under options, element attributes, and this includes layers, lines, pens, fills, surfaces, building materials, composites, profile manager, and, and the rest of it. So why do we use these? How do we use these? Option, element, attributes, layers to begin with. Our layers is telling us or giving us a list of everything that we can put something onto. So everything needs to go onto a layer. The only exception of this is something like doors and windows. Because doors and windows go into a wall, they actually don't have a layer. The wall has a layer. And then in order to be able to create drawings or views, we then need to group layers together, and these are called layer combinations. So this is the Australian template and how it works. This is the layer combinations, and these are the layers that you turn on or turn off in these layer combinations. And the intention is that when you click on one, these will automatically turn on, automatically turn off. When we look at lines, there is a set of lines and we can use lines predominantly for drawing lines, as the name suggests. So these are line types, I guess is a better way to understand that rather than lines. And when we're drawing with the line tool or with the arc tool or any of these two dimensional elements, the line types make a lot of sense. Of course, polylines and splines is another. But even when we're drawing with slabs, I can draw a slab and the line or the outline of that slab can be not a straight line, it could be a cloud or a curve or something like that. And now what's that doing? It's defining the edge with a different form. The points still exist and the reality is that the size of the slab hasn't changed. The slab is now not the shape of a cloud. So if I was to view this slab in 3D, we don't see it has, we see that it doesn't have a cloudy edge. So the line type is only a two-dimensional representation in this instance. And we can go in and change that at any time. So we can make that zigzags. And we can change, of course, the scale of these line types. So we could make those zigzags bigger if we wanted to and sometimes that's just based on scale so if we change the scale we see that the zigzag looks like it's bigger now has the zigzag got bigger no the zigzag is actually the same in terms of its output representation so if I'm outputting this drawing at 1 to 500 or outputting this drawing at 1 to 100 the zigzag is the same scale it's just that the size of the slab is now represented smaller or represented larger so that's line types then we have pens. Our pens are the way that we represent those lines and everything else. And so if we click on this slab again, we see that the outline is currently pen 89. So when I go into my pens and colors, or the pens and colors, we see that pen 89 is gray. And that's why this line is great. Whereas if I was to change this to modeling, we'd see that now changes to an aqua blue. Because the pen set changed. So we can use different pen sets, or we can set up our own pen set that is different, is complete, so we don't need to switch between pen sets depending on what type of drawing that we're doing. So that's an option as well. What else do we have? We have fill types. So this is the representation of things in elevation or things in section or cover fills. And so we can add fills to our drawing and that's part of a template. We have surfaces. The surfaces is the three dimensional setting of a building. So what it looks like in 3D and when rendered. So if we're not doing rendering, then a lot of the surface settings actually don't matter. So we can spend a lot of time when we're modeling, fiddling and adjusting surface settings. Now, the, this is where we have to understand a surface setting can also define the vectorial hatch and the color. 
So our surface setting will define how it looks in elevation even though we're not seeing an elevation in 3D necessarily. But we don't need to worry so much about texture and we don't need to worry so much about the cine render representation of surfaces unless we're doing rendering. Our building material, just like surface also included a vectorial hatch, our building material is now a element, I guess, which has a surface plus a vectorial hatch plus a line type plus a priority plus BIM information. So we're developing in complexity and then our composites and our profile managers generally are combinations of building materials. So we can choose different building materials and again those building materials of course represent surfaces and vectorial hatches and pens and line types and weights and properties etc. And we can set those composites and complex profiles as walls, slabs, roofs and shells. So we're building in complexity and there can be a lot of different possibilities that we can add into our element attributes. Now every template that you have, even the new and reset all, should have a lot of those in it. But we can customize those. And why would we choose to customize those? Once you've worked in ArchiCAD for a while, you might find that you want the layers to be named in different ways. You want the layer combinations to be named in different ways and you want the way that they turn on and turn off information to be based on the way that you work. So again, that takes a lot of time, but when you're using ArchiCAD every day, you want to be as efficient as possible. So in my ArchiEd template, I have customized all of the layers and layer combination to try to make sense of how those work. And the, the simple way to understand that is that my layer combinations match with my drawing type. The other way that layers work for me is that the modeled elements generally follow their name. So roof, wall, stairs, slab, in this case, slab is floor, or another t purpose of a slab might be fixture or joinery. Dimensions, terrain, this is my mesh. All of these go on the layers as the name suggests, but then in some cases, I'm creating a drawing that requires two dimensional information. And so I have overlay layers, and that means each of the overlay layers named is based on the type of drawing that it's useful for. So if I'm drawing two-dimensional information on a floor plan and it doesn't fit into any of those other nice categories, I put it on a layer called floor overlay. What would be an example of that? Maybe I need to add lines to my floor plan because the model itself isn't sufficient. I need to represent some information with lines. That's not a wall, it's not a slab, it's not a dimension, it's not text. What do I call it? So I call it overlay floor. Maybe I've got the same sort of idea with lighting. I've got elements like lighting symbols, lighting switches that need to be represented on the lighting drawing, but they're not fitting into any other category. So that goes on my overlay lighting. And so I have an overlay layer for each of my drawing types as represented in my layouts. And so for me, that's a simple way of working. It makes sure makes sure that everything stays where it should and it's easy to manage. Same with dimensions. So they all start with dims and then there's a dims for each type of drawing. I've customized my own lines, my own pens. I feel it's unnecessary to have multiple different pen sets so I've just created one pen set and you'll note mine, as we've talked about before, all of the first row, 1 to 10, are black. I don't feel a need to draw in colour in order to represent thickness or to differentiate between elements. So because I want to output my lines as black, they're all black and they're different thicknesses. So as the number increases, so does the thickness and its representation also 1 is 0.1, 2 is 0.2, 3 is 0.3 and so on. So that way that they're easy to distinguish and they show as different thicknesses. I have some greys of 
developing darkness, and then I have a whole suite of colors, so I can use colors to represent two-dimensional elements as well when I want the color to show. So one option is that when you go into your layout that you choose to select in the drawing settings that you turn everything to black. So you might say colors black and white or display all colors as black. Now I don't want to do that because it's unnecessary because all of my colors that I draw with are black unless I'm trying to draw with color and then I of course want that color to represent. So that's just a way of ensuring that I don't need to change between pen sets. I don't need different pen sets. Everything is just in one pen set. And of course, there is a lot of different type of fields, a lot of different types of surfaces and building materials and composites that you might want. And so once you've spent enough time in this, you might want to create your own composites. So that's what I've done. your own building materials and I prefix these with AED so that way if I ever import something that's not something's from another file I can very quickly identify it and if I need it to delete it. If you delete things it's always a good idea to delete and replace with otherwise you're going to end up with a missing file so you might want to have a, a basic type of building material that you place things onto Maybe that's just empty fill. So that way when you do need to delete things, it's got a place to go. Finally, with surfaces. Again, surfaces are most important if we're creating 3D renders. But we even use surfaces when it comes to just having elevational representations or sectional representations. In elevation, of course, our surface doesn't need to have a vectorial hatch but sometimes we want it to. We want it to represent with a line or some other type of fill and of course our texture allows that to represent with more of a true representation of reality and that's not important for elevations or sections but that's very important when we're doing three-dimensional photo rendered images. So that's our attributes, our element attributes that we find under options, and these are all part of our template file. Managing these is very important. As we go from project to project, we'll find that we get messier and messier. We bring in things, we save new copies, and the problem is that means over the course of multiple projects or over one project over, over a longer period of time, it's very hard to manage that information. So being able to do a bit of spring cleaning, manage your file, remove things that are unnecessary, and to save a template file that you can then use for the next project is hopefully going to avoid you from making those same mistakes again and again and again, and your workspace or your Archicad environment becoming cluttered with mess that's hard to manage. We'll talk more about that later as you get further into your project, but effectively you want to have a basis for your project, in this case we're calling it a template file, that if everything goes wrong and you, your file gets corrupt or you lose the file, you've always got a copy that you can refer back to that's got all of that information. So saving multiple file types with different file names if in different locations is very, very important and being able to copy stuff out of a file into a new file without losing everything is very, very valuable.